Hello everyone. Welcome to a new video for New Year and apologies for the lateness of getting this one out. It should have been out way last year but unfortunately life got in the way. Anyway, the review today is for an internet radio. It's the Red Opticum Ton 4, possibly the smallest internet radio that there is. And if you'd like to see that review, keep watching. So today, as I alluded to in the introduction, I'm going to review the smallest, most portable real internet radio that I've ever seen for sale. Now, when I say real internet radio, I'm making the distinction over some devices that say they're internet radios, but in reality are just Bluetooth speakers, which you run an app on your phone and stream the stations to the device. This is not one of those. It is a completely standalone, genuine internet radio, which also has DAB, DAB+, FM, Bluetooth, and the functionality to stream from a universal plug and play DLNA file server. And now on to the device in question. It is the Red Opticum Ton 4, and if the Opticum name means nothing to you, you probably don't live in Germany where their primary market appears to be. I do have a number of viewers from Germany, so perhaps they can give me some more information about the pr company in the comments. But they do have a website, and from it I can at least glean that they sell satellite, cable, DVB receivers, and TVs. And all the way down on here, on the left, you can see that under digital radios is the Ton 4. Now they don't appear to manufacture the Ton 4 because usefully on the back of the device and the box you'll see the name AX Technology who are based in Poland. Now I don't know what relationship AX Technology has to Opticum but we can safely say that Germany and Poland and Eastern Europe in general are the main markets for this device. However, I purchased this in 2021 for £50 from the UK Amazon website and for those who are interested in these sorts of things the device itself is manufactured in China. Now, without further ado, let's get to the review and let's get it started by unboxing everything. As you can see, there isn't much in here. From left to right, you get a micro beta type A USB cable, the instruction book, which is in German, English and Polish, and the radio itself. As I said before, the device is very small and compact. In fact, I think they've done a really good job in getting all of the functionality in the case. You can see here how it compares to a cassette and a marker pen. The exact dimensions are 163 millimeters by 44 by 88. On the top of the radio, starting on the left, you will see a very small backlit LCD screen. But although it is small, it is crystal clear. However, if your eyes are a bit dodgy like mine, you may want to put your best pair of glasses on. Moving over to the right, your buttons are on off, favorites, home, okay, left, right, and up and down for volume and navigation. There is nothing of note on the left or the right side of the radio, so we'll flip it straight over to have a look at the back. Again, not much here to see, but we'll start with the USB socket. This is marked up as a 5 volt DC input, and you would probably assume that this is how you power the device, by plugging the USB cable into a mains adapter and then plugging that into the wall. But no, because that wouldn't be very portable, would it? This socket is here to charge the internal 2000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. Yet it is entirely self-contained and is truly portable. Quite a nice touch, I think. Although I'm not sure how hard it would be to change the built-in battery should it ever fail. Next to the socket, we've got a small red LED, which is on when it's charging, but turns off when it's fully charged. Then finally we have a stereo headphone socket, because although it only has one mono speaker, the output is in stereo. The only other thing I can point out on the back is the 58cm telescopic antenna, but we've all seen one of those before. Now before we move on to the full functional review, I just want to show you the size of the Ton 4 in comparison to the only other portable internet radio I reviewed to date, which is the Lee Mega IR1. Now I was pretty impressed by the IR1 and how neat and compact it was, and as you can see, it's even smaller than that by a large margin. 
Now, before I start setting up the Ton 4, I'm going to have to give you some information about how filming this review was carried out. Just so you know why this isn't shot in the same way as my other reviews are. It became clear fairly early on that because the radio is so small, I wouldn't be able to zoom in enough using my normal overhead filming rig to view the display. So in order to get the screen in shot, I laid the device down on its front and zoomed right into the display. However, this method has the unfortunate side effect of not letting you see the buttons as I press them. So I'll do a picture in picture for that if there's anything out of the ordinary or something that I don't think appears to be logical. Anyway, enough of all of that. Like all internet radios, when you first turn them on, they'll need to connect to a Wi-Fi connection, and the Tun 4 is no exception. When you first boot it up, you'll see the SkyTune logo and a message to log on to skytune.net. This is, I believe, the fourth internet radio chipset we've come across in these reviews, but I'll tell you more about that later. You also don't need to log on to anything. It will work perfectly well without it. You just wait, and then you'll get prompted to configure the network. At that point, you just choose yes, click OK, and then you'll be able to select your wireless network. And as always in my reviews, I'll choose WPS if it's available, and in this case, it worked perfectly. Showing here in real time. Once completed, it runs an automatic software update. Now this does take a while, so I'll just skip to the end. Then it reboots, and you're ready to go. Now, there are eight menu items on the home page that you are immediately presented with after setting up the Wi-Fi. As always, I'll take you through all of them individually, uh, but we're going to start with the configuration of the radio and so we'll skip through all of the other options until we get to configuration. The first configuration option is network, and you have a number of sub-menus. Network options is a setting to keep the network connection always on or to switch it off after 30 seconds. This might be useful if you want to save battery and you're only listening to FM or DAB. Wi-Fi channels allows you to change between the channels available in China, Japan, USA or Europe. Then we have the wireless access point name, which you've previously set up, and the signal strength for that. And then there's two options to switch between a DHCP allocated IP address and DNS, or a static IP address and manually configured DNS. Date and time is next, where you can set the time zone, date and time formats, switch daylight saving time on and off, and set how time is going to be synchronised on the radio. This can be either from an NTP endpoint, uh, DAB, or an FM source. The language options are next, and you have a choice of 14 languages for the display to be in. All of the popular ones are there, plus some more slightly obscure ones from Eastern Europe, which reflects the market of this radio. DAB setup comes next, and you have the standard three options for a full scan of DAB stations, a manual tune, and an option to list all of the DAB stations which the radio can receive. Similarly, we have the options for FM radio, selecting the area, so you can switch between frequency ranges, scanning for frequencies, and a list of the stations available. Next, you configure what is classed as your locality. This will be the country the radio is located in. And you can choose between an automatic selection or a manual selection, with the automatic option being default. You can see that in this case, it's set for the United Kingdom. With playback setup, it also allows you to switch the options for any music streaming playback, so you can repeat all, repeat once, and shuffle. This is specifically used when playing via UPnP or DLNA servers. Options for resuming play are next, which tells the radio what to do when the power is switched on. By default, the radio starts playing the last mode that you had. So if it was playing an FM station, it would continue playing that station when you switched it on. But you can also switch it so it's just displaying the homepage menu and it waits for you to choose an option when switched on. 
The dimmer is next, and that shows a sliding scale to alter the LCD backlight uh, on the display, meaning you can turn it off completely, switch it on to maximum, or have it at any level in between. Following straight on from the backlight settings, we have the setting which increases the contrast of the LCD display itself. Another maximum and minimum slider is shown here. Equalization is next, and perhaps wisely due to the size of the speaker, it doesn't have the complicated bass boost and cut options of other radios, keeping it simple with three presets for boosting bass and three presets for boosting treble. The standard 2 or 5 second internet radio buffer time length is next, which is used to even out any network issues. The information section shows all of the wireless and network information, such as what Wi-Fi network you're attached to, the strength of the signal and what IP address you've been allocated. And then you have the system information such as model number and software version etc. And the option for checking the software updates is next. In this example there is nothing to update because we've just set it up. And the final configuration option takes everything back to factory defaults. Now that the device is totally configured, we can move on to the features we bought it for in the first place, and that is as a radio. Let's start with the most basic of technologies, FM. So on FM, the functionality is fairly simple. You do a scan of the stations in the configuration section, as we've already been through, and then you get a list of frequencies for all of the stations that can be received. The strange thing with this is that the TUN4 is an RDS-capable radio, you can see this when you choose a station, but the list it shows you is just the frequencies and not the names of the stations. Very bizarre. I've been through all of the options and it definitely is missing this functionality. So if you can't remember the frequencies of your favourite radio stations, you'll have to use the favourites, which I'll touch on later. Anyway, you simply choose the station by pressing OK and then you'll be able to see that it's stereo, indicated by ST in the top corner. The RDS label is there, and at the top right we see the battery level indicator, the time, and in the centre, the date. Finally, by cycling through, we see the station name and some scrolling information about the current programme. All standard stuff. Moving on to DAB, and it's basically the same functionality as FM. You scan for the channels in the configuration section, and then you get a list of all the available stations here. But this time, it is a list of names. Apart from that, everything else is as with FM. You click OK to select a station, and you can see the battery level, time, date, and you can cycle through the station name and program information. I have to say that both FM and DAB reception is excellent, and with the antenna fully extended I got 22 FM stations and 67 DAB stations, which is at least on par with what I expect at my location. It may actually be a bit better than I would normally receive. Now, to finalise the review of the radio part of the TUN4, we need to cover the internet radio functionality, because, let's face it, that's why you probably bought an internet radio. There are three menu items covering this. Let's start with the first menu item, shown as SkyTune. Now, although it's using a new type of internet radio chipset, at least from the point of view of the radios I've reviewed in the past, the sub-menu items are pretty familiar. You have the most popular channels around the world, local stations from your country, then every single station in numerical and alphabetical order. This is probably not something that you will want to scroll through, because as you can see here, there are over 33,000 stations. Finally, you also have a stations by genre and a stations by continent and country option. These are a much more useful method of searching for something you want to listen to. Now normally, that would be all of the options we would expect to find on an internet radio in terms of locating stations. But the TON4 has another way of finding stations, a full featured search. If you choose under the SkyTune option Search, you can choose to filter on any string of characters at the beginning, end or anywhere in the middle of the station name. Now it can be a bit of a pain to type in what you want to search for because you have to go up and down but it might be worth persevering if you want to find that elusive radio stations that you found once when you were on holiday. 
So now that we've reviewed the radio parts of the Ton 4, I think we'll take a pause right here and tackle some of the things that we'll call miscellany. Things that are not core functional elements, but that nevertheless should be covered. And we're going to start with favourites, because out of all of the questions I get asked, how favourites operate is one of the most common. When we're talking about saving and retrieving favourites on the Ton 4, there are two areas which you'll need to look at. There is the My Favourite option on the main menu, and the Heart button on the top of the device. Let's start with the Heart button. Basically, it has two functions. The first is to store the current station on the favourites list, and to do that you long press the button whilst listening to the station you want to store. And the second is to carry out a quick press on the button, which brings up a list of favourites already stored, and then you use the up and down arrows to find the station you want, and then press OK to choose it. The list of favourites is also available in the My Favourite option under the main menu, and that's really all there is to it. All FM, DAB or internet radio favourites are stored in a single list. There isn't one list for FM and one list for DAB stations. It's all one list and you can move each item up or down in that list. So that's the favourites out of the way. Let's hop over to something I've covered in every radio review so far, and that's the accompanying tablet or smartphone app. Well, not for this one, because there isn't one. At least I couldn't find one. There is, however, a website which is served from your radio and available on your local Wi-Fi network, which could help you manage the station channels and favourites. To access it, simply find the IP address that your radio has been allocated, and to do that you go back to the main menu, choose configuration, choose information and network information, and scroll down to the IP address, which in this case is 192.168.1.63. Then you take that IP address, type it or paste it into a browser address bar, and then wait. And wait. And well, if you're very lucky, you may get a web page which will aid you to manage your favourites. But I've tried this three times, and it's only actually managed to work once out of those occasions. So if it does work for you, that's great, you may wish to use it, but if it doesn't, well, quite frankly, you're not really missing out on much, to be honest. Actually, let's just skip over the whole aberration and move on to Bluetooth. Yes, you will be happy to know that the Ton 4 does have a Bluetooth capability. You may also be surprised that I'm trumpeting this fact, but if you've seen my review of the Majority Peterhouse, links in the description, it appears that you can't necessarily expect such basic functionality these days. Anyway, it's fairly easy to pair a device with the Ton 4 to use it as a speaker. On the main menu, choose Bluetooth, and then you'll see an ID of the device and the Not Connected message. Now on your phone or tablet, go to the Bluetooth options and choose Pair New Device. You should see the ID as displayed on the radio and select it. You should then see a confirmation appear to confirm that you can start streaming to the radio via Bluetooth. Now, although I don't want to preempt the audio test at the end of this video, I'm guessing that with the size of the speaker in the Ton 4, there will be better alternatives out there in terms of using it as a Bluetooth speaker. But I guess the option is there if you need it. OK, so now we're on the last lap, everyone. Thank you very much for sticking around this far. Right, now for the final part of the review before we get to the audio test. And this is for the Media Center functionality. This is the feature which allows you to connect to a universal plug-and-play DLNA server on your local network and to allow you to play music directly from files. Now the same caveat exists for this as when using the radio as a Bluetooth speaker, in that the size of the speaker may not lead to the best audio quality when playing back music, but again, it's nice to have that option already available. As you may already guess, playing back music from a local file server follows the same process as with all of the other features. You first choose the main menu by clicking on the Home button, then you choose Media Center, and then you'll see three options in front of you. The bottom two options, My Playlist and Clear My Playlist, or as the name suggests, for creating your own playlist, but I'm not going to cover that here. What I want to concentrate on is playing the tracks directly, and so we'll choose UPnP from the submenu. Uh, the name of the server will then appear, and in this case it's called Music Box. 
and then we have classifications for artist, album, genre, etc. But uh, these are all generated from the server itself and not from the TUN4, so yours might be different. Then find the track and click OK to start playing. And that, essentially, are all of the options available to you on the red Opticum TUN4. Finally, your perseverance has paid off. We are now going to perform the audio test on the TUN4. My test rig is, as usual, to set up the Zoom H1N recorder on a mini tripod and place it directly in front of the radio, and this should hopefully capture the good and the bad of the frequency response. I use this method to try and capture the sound as if you were listening to it with your own ears. The recordings that you will hear will be some classical music, an electronic bass track from the YouTube sound library, a piano piece, and then some speech radio. At various points I will change the volume to give you a better understanding of the range of sound that will come out of the device, and whenever I do that, I'll put a caption on the screen. Now before I start, I should mention that the way I normally run through each piece of music is to play it at half volume and then move it to maximum volume, primarily to see if the amplifier and speaker are ideally matched. Well, in this case, at least from what I've heard so far, we will get distortion at higher volume levels. So in order to protect the speaker, I'll do a maximum volume test only once before continuing with a lower volume. Anyway, without further ado, this is the Red Opticum Tun 4.
know, climate change to come that we got from the world's weather this year, which I think is something mm -hmm. significant. So we didn't get anywhere near where we want to be. We're a whole degree out. A degree doesn't sound very much. If you speak to climate change experts, it is a lot. So we're, we're out. But what we did see is the world coming together and engaging on the issue. Never underestimate what a big deal this is. It's about the only subject that the whole world comes together and actually finds consensus on. That's pretty amazing in a world which is kind of beginning to look riven by mm -hmm. sort of Cold War tensions between the West and China and stuff like that. You know, so that's amazing in its own right. We saw that they were saying, you know, you have to come back next year and raise your ambition. That's really significant. You know, the key metric, the key target is reducing CO2 emissions. We saw efforts to make countries more transparent about what they're doing, open up their books and say how they're actually going to deliver or they are delivering the promises they've made. That's really good. Transparency means you can hold people to account better. We saw some really interesting projects around methane. Not everybody signed up to these, but they're very significant. And if people start doing them and they prove to be successful, they'll hopefully become models for the world. Methane, encouraging, uh, you know, commitments on switching away from petrol and diesel cars, switching to electric vehicles. So there are all sorts of areas. Deforestation is another one. More efforts to get carbon markets working. That could be very positive. So there's kind of progress on everything. So, my friends, we have come to the end of another review. What do you think of the Ton 4? It would be great if you could give me your thoughts in the comments section. Personally, I thought there was a lot to like about it. If the Lee Mega IR1 is advertising itself as a portable internet radio, which it does, then you might just about get away with calling this the world's first pocket internet radio. That's if you have a large pocket. I like the fact that having a built-in battery means that charging is easy, and I love that the reception for FM and DAB stations is equally as good as when tuning into those internet-based stations. Now for the negatives. Well, the small screen is sometimes a hindrance. And whilst the buttons are very simple, it does mean sometimes you are pressing these a lot of the time to navigate around. But I think that the real negative is the tiny speaker and the very tinny sounding output from the radio. Even with the EQ cranked all of the way up, you're not going to get much bass response out of this. And if your input is particularly loud, you will get distortion. If you're planning on listening on headphones or plugging into an external speaker to the headphone jack, then you'll be absolutely fine. But if you're purchasing this as your sole means of entertainment in your caravan or on your boat, then you may want to think again. Anyway, that's all for me now. If you could like, subscribe and hit the bell, that would be great. But until next video, stay safe and thanks for watching.